Tamil Nadu's performance uh, in terms of the containment of COVID-19 is not very bad. We need not get unnecessarily worried by the uh, rise in figures in between. That reflected better testing. However, it's very clear it could have done much better on two or three grounds, especially in its comparison with Kerala, with which its performance was also always matched in the very beginning. And then after some time, it fell behind, whereas Kerala was able to contain it. Tamil Nadu continued to throw up cases, and that phenomena has not yet stopped. So I think we need to understand what uh, went wrong in Tamil Nadu. There are two or three things that uh, Kerala was better on and Tamil Nadu was poor on and Tamil Nadu still remains relatively weak on this. The first most important thing was that Kerala was relatively free of stigma. Tamil Nadu had a very high degree of stigma not only in that outrageous attack on the doctor's burial, but in attacks in many towns and cities on health workers, and also a very high degree of scare, and some of it has been provoked by the subtext of the government messaging that always tries to find an accused for the outbreak. So the government sort of takes a position that if everybody is following what they are saying, that there will be no outbreak. And if there is an outbreak, then somebody has to be blamed. First, it was the Talibagi Muslims they were blaming. And later on, they are now recently blaming the Coimbedo market vendors, saying if they had listened to our advice and shifted the market, it would not have happened. That's just not true. The point about this epidemic is that in an unpredictable way, you will get new clusters. And when you get new clusters, you have to go out there, identify the cases, isolate, test and isolate the positive cases, quarantine the contacts and get on top of them. No sooner have you suppressed it in one cluster, some other cluster will rise. And you need a very, very good disease, disease surveillance program across all districts, which can warn you when the cluster is a very small sized cluster so that you can prevent it from going back. And how do you look in a place where there is no disease? So what am I saying? I'm saying that you need to give more attention where there is no disease also. And when, what do you do there? You look at all patients with fever of more than three days or cough with more than three days and you test them for COVID. There are a hundred patients, test all a hundred influenza like illnesses. But if you can't test all hundred, at least test 50 of them or 25 of them. And among these symptomatic people, if you find a few positive, even three or four, you can detect a small sized outbreak. If you are testing random and testing asymptomatic people, then you are likely to miss it. You have to focus it on this. And the very fact that Tamil Nadu 90% are asymptomatic is a cause for worry, not celebration, which means you are not testing enough symptomatics. So therefore, this Madras cluster, this Chennai cluster, could grow to this size before it became noticed. Once they noticed it, they have got a reasonable containment going and I am hopeful that it will come back. So I think this is the big thing about it. The lack of a disease surveillance, the high degree of stigmatization. And the third point is the degree of community engagement and participation that you need. In Kerala, the panchayats are very active. They are active like volunteers. There is a setup called palliative care where there is outreach going down to the village. People who are old and sick are being protected. They have confidence in the system. In Tamil Nadu, it is a policing operation more than a community engagement operation. The police is not your first or even your last effort to trace a contact. The police should not be used in contact tracing. Not that they are used very. It has to depend upon social workers. I'm saying containment is very police oriented. But that is not what works. What works is communities, people coming forward and reporting, oh, I was in that market on that particular day that you have notified. 
would you like to test me out i am staying at home and being in quarantine but would you like to test me out you need that high degree of people community engagement and cooperation and participation you can't detect a person who wants to hide from you even if you give him arogya setu this notion that by giving him arogya setu you can somehow catch the guy is a mistake at some point you need people to actively actively collab cooperate and that is the third uh, big uh, difference there are two types of problems here one problem is of people who are at high risk because they are in direct coming into direct contact with covid 19 Uh, fortunately the number of such cases are limited so there are some 4900 cases and uh, other than that there is also uh, the operate the intensive care patients and ventilator patients are even less and therefore the uh, the available ppe they are able to manage if it goes further i don't know whether they can manage but at this point of time this high risk ppe equipment seems in but i have one worry i am one worry that they are partly solving this problem by pushing home isolation they are saying if you are positive and mild or asymptomatic you can be at home i am not in favor of that home isolation means that they may worsen at home without noticing and come too late this happened in italy it's not a good thing a lot of mortality it's avoidable mortality more as they worsen and as they go around they may not observe isolation even in terms of health care they may not come because they have covid but most of them have comorbidities they may come for their diabetes treatment they may come for their cancer treatment they may come so they will be going to hospitals using the public bus so they will spread the infection so you need to isolate them as a priority so this uh, means you will require more ppes uh, protective equipment and i think that should be an important con uh, consideration on that but the other problem is what to do about many health worker staff who are not on covid 19 duty but are getting infected because in the general outpatients they see there are a lot of patients who are asymptomatic mildly symptomatic with covid 19 this is a serious problem a lot of the people who are infected in tamil nadu health workers are not people who were on covid 19 duty and you need two things in it one of course is hospitals must have better methods of preventing what is called a nosocomial infection hospital acquired infection you need to build the systems processes so that hospitals don't become a source of spread you can triage and uh, isolate these patients suspect patients in a better way and second you need to actually follow some mechanisms of social distancing and all ensure that you are allowing testing to a much wider range of symptomatic patients so that you do not have so many people walking around so if there is a person with cancer coming for care for cancer care he should be given a test because he is likely to be covid 19 positive even if he has no symptoms of it and therefore you can prevent the doctors and nurses working in the cancer ward who are not dealing with covid 19 from getting covid 19 infection so this i think is some of the key things that they need to do i i actually don't know in fact now everybody is mystified as to why they have to deny it community spread does not mean that the end of the world is near it is not an apocalyptic situation it just means that there may be cases where you are not contained to people where you are not some cases may come from unexpected directions so they are the fact that you can go and inquire from them and find a contact doesn't mean community it has to it does not come from the soil it will only come from another end so it is mysterious except for one thing i think when you say there is no community spread you reduce your responsibility to test people who are symptomatic without the contact list you test only people with the contact that is a very dangerous way of doing it 
because you will miss new clusters and that is a cost we are paying this community spread has really the stage 2 3 is not a logic of epidemiology it came in from the clinicians stage 3 cancer has spread so much you can't do anything about it. that's cancer staging in epidemiology staging the disease is widespread so you have to have a disease surveillance program because you don't quite know where the next case is coming from that's all it means so i don't think uh, this denial of community transmission is a need needless thing somewhere the government is still oriented towards thinking that it will eradicate the disease it will reduce it to zero a recent statement says we will open colleges after we eliminate the disease believe me even after the vaccine comes it will take another to one year to after the vaccine comes to eliminate the disease so you will never open colleges for two years if you go by that in kerala for example still get some 15 to 20 cases south korea get some cases sweden get some cases they are well controlled but a few cases come here and there and you can manage them the health system has been prepared to take care of it now get on with normal life no need to some simple rules of distancing you follow but i don't think uh, we need this whole thing so this is also leading to an unnecessary and unplanned and uh, unfocused extension of lockdowns it is not good so i think uh, it though the mistake is a bit innocent a matter of technical definitions in uh, its uh, impact is in terms of failing to test uh, all symptomatic irrespective of contact and extending lockdowns even if there is one or two cases in setting the goal at eradication rather than at uh, containment i think they are making a mistake kerala has reached what we can say the low endemic stage where there is a small trickle of cases coming in some of it from migrants some of it locally never mind what they say everybody wants to say the thing uh, but uh, they are on top of it whenever they find a new case they are able to go and uh, take the necessary for every case some 100 people they are able to identify who need quarantine in tamil nadu it is only 5 or 10 we are able to identify so at some point that cooperation helps so they are able to do a very uh, good here we are still having large uncontrolled clusters the major one is chennai but i am very worried about the kadalore and virupuram clusters and about the uh, cluster in i think uh, of these places tirupur near there one of the arielu arielur cluster is there but i think also we need to keep a better surveillance for new clusters we we should not expect you you should be worried if all a district is reporting zero for a very long time you should expect a small outbreak Uh, in thing and you like a cat and mouse game there is a small outbreak there you go and stop it then another outbreak occurs you stop and that is the way we will have to manage till the time of the vaccine but believe me we can actually reduce the number of cases and uh, uh, i think very well if we have such a good surveillance system in i don't think it is the health uh, network it is at the level of the super specialists that we are failing we are failing in our sense of humanity we are failing in our sense of community and this has been an old program a problem of tamil nadu it's a very well administered healthcare system but with very very weak community links the panchayats are almost not involved the local public are not involved the ngo involvement civil society involvement is very weak people's movements trade union movements is very weak normally it did not matter but now it is making a difference otherwise i cannot explain why the community health system is as good as kerala but it is in, in terms of how it deals with the community there is a big difference you are treating these people as the objects as carriers of disease not as people for whom you are providing health care your purpose of existence as a healthcare provider is to say that the migrant is sick you know, i know the migrant is sick so i must bring him in first i must send an ambulance to pick him up that should be the response of a healthcare system 
that failure is going to cost us more. 